All right, welcome to uh, History of Psychology. In class, we talked about the roots of psychology, and um, I just wanted to, to record this video lecture to sort of go over what it is we talked about. Um, we know that psychology originated during ancient Greece uh, with thinkers such as uh, Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates. Uh, another known figure worth mention from the 16th century was, uh, who was also influenced by early Greek philosophy was uh, French philosopher René Descartes, um, or Descartes, depending on, on who you're speaking to, how it is they pronounce his name. Uh, he was famous for saying, I think, therefore I am. Uh, like Socrates and Plato, uh, Descartes believed in dualism, meaning that the mind and body were separate entities and that most ideas, thoughts, and traits were in fact innate. You were born with these things. On the other hand, Aristotle believed in monoism, meaning that the mind and body were connected uh, as opposed to separate and that the mind was a blank slate or a tabula rasa upon which experience writes itself. All of these beliefs uh, came about during the Age of Enlightenment, or the, the Age of Reason. And uh, from these early perspectives, the debate surrounding nature versus nurture was born, and it helped to pave the way for more in-depth discussions on the mind and human behavior. Uh, one such discussion took place with uh, a German physicist, Fechner. Fechner is not in this video, but in, in the 19th century, he argued that monoism was in fact more reasonable and that the mind and body work together as observed through uh, sensation, the fact that we can feel things um, and, and think about those connections with our mind. But anyways, um, so while these questions were coming about on the connection between the mind and the body, psychology as we know it wasn't even a thing. It, it wasn't until the year 1879 or late 19th century that the, the term psychologist or psychology was born. And the first psychology lab in Germany was founded by Wilhelm Wundt. Uh, Wilhelm Wundt is not on this uh, slideshow, but he is worth mention because uh, Wundt is, in, in fact, the father of psychology. A lot of people think that Freud is, but Sigmund Freud is completely um, uh, not the father of psychology. He is the father of psychoanalytic theory or the functioning of the unconscious mind. He was the first to focus all of his attention on abnormal behavior as opposed to observable behavior, uh, which is more in behaviorism. Freud's psychoanalytic approach uh, was based on the view that behavior is motivated by unconscious inner forces over which the individual had uh, very little control. So behaviorists um, the be the behavioral theories or, or uh, behaviors such as Ivan Pavlov, uh, John Watson, and uh, B. F. Skinner sort of also agreed with this uh, lack of of control when it came to behavior. Uh, B. F. Skinner, or I should start with Watson. Watson for his, was known for his advocacy of the behavioral approach. Uh, he also was known for one of the most uh, controversial studies with a baby, uh, the Little Albert study. And um, you'll learn more about him when we start talking about learning. Pavlov was known for his classical conditioning um, with, the, with the dogs and the tuning of the fork. You'll see that as well in your text. And um, of course we have uh, Skinner who was known for operant conditioning whereby uh, learning took place after a positive or, or a negative consequence. So then there's the humanist. This is where we left off that we didn't get to here yet. The humanists um, disregarded the psychoanalytic and behaviorist uh, approaches because of that lack of control issue. Um, the humanistic psychology approach suggests that human nature is essentially positive and that people are naturally inclined to grow and change for the better. This means that we have free will and determinism. The fact that we can control our behaviors and that we, we can take responsibility it does not necessarily mean that we are, um, you know, uh, have maladaptive behaviors because of some abnormality in our mind or in our brain. 
So Carl Rogers, Rogers and Abraham uh, Maslow are two notable figures in humanistic psychology, and as a matter of fact, these are the ones who paved the way to what we now call positive psychology, that sort of um, of naturalist type of uh, psychology that we see today, where it is we say things like what you think about you bring about, uh, that you have all the control and power to not have maladaptive thoughts. Um, if you fix your thinking, you can fix your problem. Now, if we were in class, I would have you do a, a group exercise. Um, but because this is an online lecture, what I would like you to do is think about what psychology is. And what do you think psychology is? Um, and um, what do you think psychologists do? Where do, where do you find them? You want to go ahead and pause the video right here and then we'll discuss and see what your statements look like. Okay, so 10 minutes should have passed and um, you should have paused right here and answered my question. And chances are your statement for what you think psychology is sounded more like psychology is the study of abnormal behavior or psychology is the study of human behavior and mental issues or something of some type of negative sort of uh, undertone to it. Uh, crazy people. Sometimes some people would say uh, psychology is about crazy people. Psychology is about uh, mental breakdowns and studying mental uh, people with mental issues and such. It's something to that effect. Well, fact of the matter is uh, psychology is a whole lot more than that. Uh, what is psychology? Well, psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. Okay, so, so it, what makes it scientific? Well, science is not defined by the subject studied or the equipment used. It is a systematic approach to gathering knowledge through careful observation and experimentation. Uh, the key word there being experimentation, or rather empirical research. Um, if you think about that statement, let it marinate for a minute, there are three points made in that statement about what makes a subject, or in this case, psychology of science. Gathering knowledge, for one thing. Careful observation and experimentation. Those three things are important when it comes to uh, saying that a science, something is a science. When we observe behavior, uh, as in behaviorism, that what behaviorists do, um, these are observable activities. And um, naturalistic observation is an example of a scientific method of observation that is not necessarily um, considered empirical research or scientific unless there's some type of manipulation going on and it is in fact an experiment and you're observing what's going on with that experiment. And then of course we have the other part of our definition, the mental processes. Throughout this course more than likely we'll talk about thoughts and emotions and we'll talk about cognition, human cognition. All of these are tied up with uh, mental processes. So what are the four goals of psychology? The four goals of psychology are to describe, explain, predict, and control. It's important to have an understanding of these goals, and also it's, it's on your test. One, you'd want to describe and report what it is you observe. For example, um, the text uh, uses a, a traumatic experience, uh, I believe, or if not this text, I mean, th there are some experiences it would describe. Um, let's say that it described an experience of miners that were trapped for 23 days without sufficient food, water, and adequate medical supplies. A psychologist may be asked to observe their behaviors and moods soon after their experience and report any response to the trauma. That would be an ex example of being able to describe and report what it is you observe in a natural setting. You would explain by analyzing the report and gathering data. Uh, you would predict a theory based on uh, noticeably observed trends and uh, formalize a hypothesis that can be retested and duplicated with the same result by other researchers with similar traumatic populations. So um, 
a prediction really is your hypothesis. What it is you're trying to uh, say would be your outcome. And you're going to test that hypothesis and in turn create a theory uh, based on your results. And then there's the control. Uh, use control by applying the findings in an effort to shape or modify problem behaviors as a result of that trauma. That would be an example of that. So again, these four goals are to describe, explain, predict, and control. So where do psychologists work? Well, they're in a number of places. Psychologists are in business and government. These are your industrial and organizational psychologists. They're the big money makers, by the way. Then you have your school psychologists, um, K through 12. They make up about 8% of the psychologist population. Um, those that are in higher education, you, we call them scholar practitioners. They're teaching, they're doing what it is I'm doing, but they're also clinical psychologists on the side, and they make up the bulk of uh, psychologists. Then there's those in independent practice. They have their own practice, and they do their own therapy. They're in hospital setti settings, manage care, and other human service areas as well, uh, working as case workers. Uh, the hospital, human services, and managed care, you'll find them uh, also on a bachelor's degree level, um, as well as on a master's degree level. You can find master's degree levels as, as high up as uh, the K-12 and even as industrial psychologists. So um, there's a number of areas that you'll find psychologists uh, and working in many different fields. All right, so I can't play this video here, but if you like to learn more about what it is we'll talk about in this course, and you'd like to uh, have a more in-depth look at, uh, at psychology, you'd want to go ahead and take a look at this YouTube video. You can go to youtube.com uh, and type in Intro to Psychology Crash Course, or you can copy my URL uh, video uh, link right here. And um, this gives you like a, a little <laughs> Uh, animated, uh, really fun version of uh, intro to psychology and uh, the topics that we'll cover throughout this course.